Hey all, today we are going to continue our review for the SOL and learning some ways that we can use Desmos uh, as a tool to help us through this test and help us find some answers. And today we're gonna focus on solving equations and inequalities. So just like uh, in the last one, I have some screenshots here um, that show some examples. These notes will also be posted on Canvas, so you can go find these screenshots and anything I write down. I have some Des or some SOL style questions that I will show you how to use these uh, tips. And then, of course, there will be questions at the end for you to practice uh, using the tool um, that will be graded. So we can solve equations and inequalities using Desmos by simply typing into Desmos the equation or inequality we want to solve. So we wanted to solve this equation here, which we could do by hand and we could find a solution of negative three. But if we're stuck or we think we're going to make a mistake, we can type that or that equation into Desmos exactly the way we see it. We're not going to change X like we did when we use sliders. We'll leave it as X because we want it to graph a line and it graphs this line. And if we go find the point on that line where it crosses the X axis, the X intercept, if you can't see it, it's negative three zero. That first number is our X value and that is our solution to this equation. Um, this just gives us a note that on the SOL, they typically are looking for fractions. And as we've said many, many times this year, if you hit that button that looks like this, it'll convert any decimal to a fraction for you. We can do the same thing with inequalities. We can type in inequality into Desmos. We haven't actually solved inequalities by hand this year. That's okay. We type them in. The solution to an inequality is going to look slightly different. We're going to have shaded parts of our graph, and then we're either going to have a dashed line or a solid line. So when you see something like this on Desmos, we would go look for the intercept, which would be negative 10, 0. And so part of our solution is going to be, just like when we solve that equation above, is going to be this first number, negative 10. That's our x value. You can see it's part of the solution here. Our symbol that we choose, the little arrow, when if you look at it as an arrow, is going to point in the direction of the shading. So you can see this symbol points to the left, the direction of the shading. Sometimes they're giving you uh, options that have number lines. So our arrow would go to the left in the direction of our symbol. So if our shading was on the right, we would choose either this one or this one. And then if it's a dashed line, it's gonna not have the equals to element. It's not gonna have the little line underneath. Uh, if I'm looking at this, it's gonna have an open circle. So these, two types of inequalities, less than or greater than, are going to have an open circle if it's graphed on a number line like this. They're also going to have dashed lines when they're graphed on Desmos. The or equals to ones would have a filled in dot and a solid line when it's graphed on Desmos. So if we had an a uh, solid line here, then we would have filled in this dot. As always, if, if you get stuck or are confused by something I'm saying, please do ask for help and we can have a chat individually about that to clarify anything. And so let me solve a few equations and inequalities. This one is not one that we can do using Desmos, but I did think that it was important to bring up this idea that if you're solving an equation and you get to the end of that equation and you get something like one equals two, you're gonna think, wow, I did something wrong here. One does not equal two. You didn't do something wrong. What happens when you get something like this is that there are no solutions. So if you're solving the equation and you get something like this, there are no solutions. If you are solving an equation and you get something like 
2 equals 2, then there would be infinitely many solutions. That would mean that you could plug any number in for x, and the equation would be true. So just a quick reminder on those two special case cases, infinite solutions, which um, sometimes we say all real numbers. And then, of course, uh, no solutions. So I'm going to do a couple of these inequalities here. I've already put them into Desmos. So this is our first inequality. And I can move this around. But what I want to go do is I want to find that intercept. And so I look at the first number, and that means negative 9 is going to be part of my uh, solution. I'm going to put x at the beginning. And now we just need to decide which inequality symbol we need. It's going to be that one or this one. And so my shading goes to the right. And so that means I want the one that looks like an arrow that points to the right. That's this one. And so my answer would look like this. Because my line was dashed, there's no little equals to underneath. So my final answer looks like this. x is greater than negative 9. That's just by graphing it, finding the intercept, choosing that first number, and then having my, my inequality point in the direction of the shading. So my shading was on the right. My inequality arrow should point to the right. If I look at this next one, and if I'm going too fast, that, that's OK. You can always pause if you need to plug stuff into Desmos. Please do that. I've graphed my second one. I go find the intercept. I'm looking for the first number. That's negative 4. My shading is it to the left of it. So I would put, uh, I'm looking at negative 4. I'm going to put either a closed circle or a open circle. Since this is a dashed line, that means I'm going to have an open circle at negative 4. And since my shading is to the left, my arrow on this number line is going to go to the left. And so this is a type of question where I have to pick one of these options and, and I think you just click on it. And so this arrow represents what we would have here. My dashed line tells us it's an open circle. My shading on the left of the line shows us that my arrow should point to the left. So if I were to actually write this solution like I did up here, it would look like x, arrow to the left, negative 4. We've talked about systems of equations. Um, when you're solving a system of equations, you just graph both equations. So if, the, if you're having trouble seeing this, I'll, I'll enlarge it a bit, but also this is on Canvas. So if I wanted to solve this system of equations, we would graph them in Desmos, and then the solution is the location where they intersect. When we were just graphing earlier, the solutions were the x-intercepts. When you're graphing two lines and you want to know the solution to that system, you don't go find the x-intercepts. You find the one place where they intersect. So in this case, the solution is 4, 2. And there are some special cases, much like when you're solving one equation. Uh, if these two lines are parallel and they never cross, that means there is no solution to that system of equations. There's no place where they're going to intersect, so there's no point where you can go find where they intersect. If I graph two lines, two equations, and all I do is I see one line, that means that one line is on top of the other. It means that they're actually the same equation. They just look different when we write them. And so that means there's infinitely many solutions. It means that they're crossing all the time. And so any point that's on one of the lines will also be on the other one. And again, you can find these answers just by plugging them in to Desmos, just by graphing these lines. When we wanted to find solutions to inequalities earlier, not too not too long ago, we wanted to know, hey, was was this point in a solution or, or part of the solution? The shaded region is always where the solutions are. 
And if the line is solid, that means the points, the solutions can be on the line as well. When it's when it's dashed like this one, that means any point on this line is not a solution. It's only the points in the shaded area. So um, this is not a solution. Any point in this non-shaded area is not a solution, including all the points that would be on this line. Since it's a dot dashed line, points on that line would not be a solution. When I have a system of inequalities, that means I'm graphing two inequalities. I'm looking for the where the place where the shading overlaps. So when I just talked about a system of equations, we looked for the one place where the two lines crossed. Here I'm looking for where is the place where the two shadings overlap. And so typically that area when you graph on Desmos will be a darker color. So perhaps um, maybe this was red and uh, I'm just guessing here and this was green. And then I know red and green don't make purple, but uh, you know they would make some darker color. The red and the green would overlap and create this slightly darker red or darker green. And this would be my solution space, my solutions. Any point in that space would be a solution, the overlap of the two shaded regions. So a lot of times we'll be looking on, on the test for which shaded region represents the solution. And we can just graph these in Desmos and look on the picture where the sh overlap of the shaded region is. So let's actually do that. This one is asking, if I graph those two things, which one of these four regions is gonna be the place where the shading overlaps? So let me go graph those. So you can see I have green, I have purple, and then that green and purple, purple kind of come together to make this like dark purple, maybe even like sort of bluish. Doesn't matter what the color is, but this darker area is the area where the solutions are. And so if I go look here, that area was on the left of my picture and therefore, this is the area on the left where my solutions are. So again, I didn't really do any math here. I just graphed them and, and looked at the picture to see where the answer was. In this problem, I'm trying to write the system of inequalities based on the solution. So I have gone and graphed the options. So when I look here, let me just graph these four. My red and green shading comes from this line, which is uh, this second equation. So this is red and green. And then uh, I have blue and black. blue and black was for this one. And I need to figure out which combination uh, is giving me this shaded region. I know that my blue and black options need to be without the little line underneath because it's a dashed line. It's a dashed line on my picture. Oop, it's not. I have this backwards perhaps. Yep, I have this backwards. So this is actually going to be like this. Okay, so now that line going down to the right is solid, like this one. And then this line going up to the right is dashed, like it is here. So I just need to pick which one is which. And so I want my shaded region to be this top right corner. So I want this region to stay there when I unclick the, the lines I don't need. And so it looks like this region is made by black and red. So I'm gonna get rid of blue and green. And I can see that my black and red region is in that top 
right area. So that means that my two inequalities need to look like this black one and this red one. So I'm going to go choose that uh, greater than or equal to. That one goes there. And then greater than goes here. And on the, the testing system, you would actually just drag those things to where you wanted them. If that got a little confusing, especially because I had made a mistake, please do ask me and I'll come over and clarify for you. So as ever, I want you to practice using Desmos to solve these things. There are 10 questions, please do them all. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. If you have a hard time seeing them on here, please do just access this document from Canvas. Take your time on these and when you need help, please feel free to ask.